Good morning, dear friends. What a joy it is for us to meet again this morning, a brand new day. And uh, this is the day the Lord has given us that we may rejoice in Him and uh, rejoice on this day and uh, be glad. And so before we get into the uh, day's activities and uh, get into the business of our life, let us be quiet for a few minutes and be at the feet of Jesus. Let us begin this day by hearing the voice of the Spirit. Today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. This is the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus was still seeking the lost. Uh, because verse 10 of this chapter says, Jesus' own words, the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Now, this meeting of Jesus and Zacchaeus happened a few days before the crucifixion of Christ. And so Jesus was still seeking the lost. And this was the purpose of his coming to seek what was lost to him, what was lost to God, humanity, the entire human race. Zacchaeus, a tax collector, earned his living by collecting more than what was due or what was necessary. And um, from the people, which was not a good thing, and for this reason, tax collectors were despised and hated by the people, by the public. We learn a very important lesson from Jesus' con concern, con concern for Zacchaeus. Now, what is that lesson? The lesson is that we should bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the under undesirables of the society. For all are lost and uh, in need of salvation. Regardless of one's status and one's social condition and uh, standing in the society, our education, some are dignified and good and uh, some are completely lost in life. And then there are people like Zacchaeus, in verses 9 and 10, notice what Jesus said concerning Zacchaeus. Jesus said concerning Zacchaeus in these verses, This man too is a son of Abraham, because salvation has come to this household today. What does the statement actually mean? The statement of Jesus. I can see four things and I would like to mention today these four things for our benefit and for our learning and for our practice. Number one, it means he too was a man of the covenant and he belonged to the Household of God. That is the first thing. According to the, uh, to the words of Jesus Christ. And secondly, he too can inherit the blessings God promised to Abraham. Abraham's blessings could be his if he lived within that covenant. And that is, Abrahamic covenant. And thirdly, but as he grew up, he too, like the prodigal son, was lost. Attracted or distracted by the uh, deception, deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of life, thus he lost all the privileges and along with that, all the blessings 
contained in the Abrahamic promise or covenant. Though he was qualified to inherit those blessings, to have a part of all those blessings, by his own choice, not only he was lost, all these blessings within that covenant was lost to him. And fourthly, he could be restored according to Jesus and be blessed again. Now the question is how? Our God is a seeking God. Jesus possessed the same heart of God the Father. And therefore, he is the seeker of the lost. That's what he, he said in verse 10 of this, which I quoted in the beginning. The Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, you will remember, we read about the fall of man. See, the first question God the Creator asked man ever was, Adam, where are you? That is in chapter 3 of Genesis. Man was lost. He was created for God. And like a loving father, every day God would come. And how like little children, both Adam and Eve would be waiting. And when the moment they hear the footprints of God the Creator, both of them will come running to a loving father. And what wonderful sweet fellowship and communion and uh, wonderful time they used to enjoy. But then suddenly one day, God came, but both the man and the woman was not to be found anywhere. He looked all around, but he couldn't find them. And so here comes the cry from the heart of God, the Creator, a father's cry. Adam, where are you? That is the first question God ever asked man. Since then, this God has been seeking his lost children in humanity. And that, that means every time the gospel message is proclaimed or declared to people, it is the call of God the father to a lost humanity. His heart cries, My children, where are you? I'm sure all of you have names. I have a name. You have a name. And uh, when the lost himself is found and restored, Everything he lost will also be restored to him. And that is the blessing that Jesus Christ has brought to humanity. If you could get inside of God's heart, you will begin to feel very strongly and hear his whispering cry. My child, where are you? If there is even one of my listeners is lost and you want to return to God the Father, the Creator, it is time for you to respond to His call. Tell him the truth. I am hiding because I was afraid. And my friends, this is the first result of 
disobedience. Fear. Fear is the first thing that will be produced within your heart. Because you know that you have broken the covenant by disobeying the command of the Lord God Almighty. And what He forbids us is always been made clear to us in God's word. It is time for you to respond to his call. As I said, be honest with yourself and be honest with God. God, I am hiding from you. Because I am afraid. And of course, God then responded by asking him, Why have you eaten the forbidden fruit and of course you know the answer Adam gave and then the, uh, the, the the conversation that God the creator had with Adam the man and then Eve the wife and then ultimately the serpent and the consequences that they were given to suffer you know it all And it, when you are honest with God and when God sees that your heart is yearning to return to him, he is waiting and ready to take you in again. He is ready to accept you back and restore to you whatever you have lost. You have lost, my friends. Riches and blessings beyond description. And the most important things that you lost in the process is life and then your relationship with God Almighty, the life giver. We will continue this tomorrow. And I will explain to you how you have lost life and how that God is ready to restore to you the life that he has blessed you with. You may say, well, I have not lost any life because I am still breathing and I am alive and I run around and I eat and I enjoy life. Yes, that is true. But that is not the life that God has created for. God himself said the day you eat that fruit, you will die. What is that? That is the life we are going to talk about tomorrow. And truly, the day he disobeyed and she disobeyed, both of them truly died. They may have an existence that is not the purpose for which God has created you. It is different. And so, as you meditate on these thoughts that I have passed on to you today, let us keep ourselves and protect ourselves from sins and from attractions which are not really attractions, they are distractions for our life. Jesus himself said, why the word of God cannot grow in you? One of the reasons is the deceitfulness of riches and love of the pleasures of life. They choked the new life that God puts in your heart. And so then, remember the purpose for which God created you. To live eternally, glorify God, and enjoy real life. God bless you as you meditate on this. Read the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Today itself. And be prepared to receive the rest tomorrow. God bless you. As you live, may the 
the Holy Spirit grant you his grace and wisdom to live according to God's will and fulfill his purposes in your life. And don't miss out. Don't be lost. God bless you. Amen. This is a good day and have a wonderful day ahead of you. Amen.